the birds on high, join the singing with me. Soft sea breezes whisper your fame. Thunder and lightning shout out your name. All right, the Lord wants us to have peace. He, he himself is our peace, right? But that's virtually impossible when we're not content, when we're not satisfied. Dissatisfaction will rob you of your peace every time. See, and dissatisfaction is one of the most powerful forces on earth. Marriages and homes are broken because of it. Governments are overthrown because of it. Jobs are lost and lives are just wasted when people are dissatisfied and have no real hope. Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones, back in the 1960s, I think one of their biggest hits, one of their biggest hits ever, was the song, I Can't Get No Satisfaction. And as a matter of fact, they just uh, did a reprise of that recently. I think they were here in the United States doing a concert and played that again. They still can't get any satisfaction. See, that, that British band was playing to the sentiments, sentiments of, a, of a generation that was in rebellion and discontent with everything around them. They were looking in all the wrong places for satisfaction. Dissatisfaction, discontentment, is a motivator. It will motivate you to do things, but it will either motivate you to do good things or it will motivate you to do bad things. You know, it was Oswald Chambers, uh, you know, Oswald Chambers, who wrote uh, My Utmost for His Highest, you know, back in the, he wrote that, in, I think, in 1927, in the early 20s, in any event. It's a book that's been read by, by millions and has blessed millions since it was first published. And I know one of the things, uh, just a saying he said, and he talked about a magnificent obsession. To be obsessed means to be totally, totally focused on something. You can't take your mind off it. You can't take your eyes off it when you're, when you're obsessed with something. So you can have bad obsessions, or you can have that magnificent obsession. It's, it's a, an obsession will drive you to take action. Like I said, either good or bad, depending on what your obsession is. You know, um, back in the late 90s, there was a fellow, a Christian singer and songwriter named Scott Wesley Brown, who wrote a very beautiful song, I mean, a song that I really, really am blessed by, called More Like You, Jesus. I don't know if you're familiar with that. If you're not, go find it and listen to it. That expresses, I believe, a really, a, a godly dissatisfaction. Okay, do you believe you can have a godly dissatisfaction? Listen to the words, some of the words in that song. More like you, Jesus, more like you. Fill my heart with your desire to make me more like you. More like you, Jesus, more like you. Touch my lips with holy fire and make me more like you. I think that's, that's a glorious desire. But it comes out of a dissatisfaction, in a sense, of where you are in Christ. Okay? You want to be more like Him. You're not satisfied. You're not content being where you are. Because we're not enough like Jesus. Right? And that's, what that, that's the sentiment that that song expresses. But that's a, there's a paradox here, you see. The paradox that is expressed is about our being less than completely Christ-like, right? So, but that's met with the promises of God. You know, it says, it says in Proverbs, like cold water to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a, from a far country, in Proverbs 25, 25. So, God satisfies, you know, we're talking about hungering and thirsting for righteousness. If you're thirsty for righteousness, well, good news will, will, will satisfy that, right? Here's the good news. Here's the good news. Paul wrote to the Philippians, and he said, For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1.6. See, the work that he's doing, he's going to complete. And he goes on in Philippians, in the second chapter, to say, For it is God who is at work in you, 
both to will and to work for his good pleasure. You see, the Father's plan is not just to make me and you more like Jesus. His plan and his promise is to make me just like Jesus. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not appeared as yet what we will be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him, because we will see him just as he is. 1 John 3, 2. And then the great promise that Paul expresses in Romans 8, 29. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. More like Jesus? No. Just like Jesus. God's love Above the heavens God's love Deeper than the sea His love Higher than the mountains God's love Always watching over you